Hmm. Okay, take two. Take two. <laughs> take 12? Huh? What? <laughs> what? what? What are you like talking about? We're like 20 minutes in. I don't even know how long we were uh, in. How, how far did we get? I, I don't think I we don't got know. that far. It wasn't recording. recording. <laughs> that's awesome. I want to say we were uh, at least 10 minutes in talking. You know, and uh, that's fine because I was, I, I, I don't think I got to the point fast enough anyway, so I'm not worried. I wasn't worried. sure. We were, uh, so, so we're not making any comments about other stuff that we were talking about. What, X-Wings and Katy Perry? Yeah, uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> You yes. had to go there. So it's monkey business. As you can tell, we're already back into the swing of things. Uh, we this had a, is what happens we, when the rest of the crew like. I'm telling away. you, there's only three of us in the studio today, and that's Billy, right. Tanya, and me. And I am and your host. Billy I am Chris. just got fired. And Billy did not get fired. <laughs> Billy fired himself. We're rehiring him. Yes, oh. exactly. Billy, you're not the first person in this outfit who's ever made a mistake, so don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, that's just, a, that's just a, to let you know, we, we're doing this excellent podcast on gaming, which uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to recreate word for word because this idiot <laughs> forgot to hit record oh. for the first 15 minutes. You know, considering how long we've been doing this podcast series it now, and that's the first time that's... Yeah, it was yeah. bound to happen. Law of uh, how many hours of podcasting do we have? In, uh, in, in, well... And this is the All first of that one? minus fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. There you go. <laughs> uh, I think I think we've got something like twenty four hours worth of podcasting. Yeah. At this point. So so fifteen so minutes. Fifteen of, minutes is uh, not going to kill us. Yeah. We've been equivalent of dead air. If you, you listen to the radio, <laughs> that's and it. you've ever wondered well, how come there's no music, there's no one talking, that just happened. Yes. <laughs> To um, us while we're talking, and then Billy's like, oh, well, I didn't What we were record. talking about and what we'll be talking about again is gaming. And we've talked about tabletop gaming in the past. In the early podcasts, we had, we had mentioned how much you know we love D&D and how many of us on the board had, had met through Dungeons & Dragons and things like that. And Billy identified early on that he himself had never experienced it before. The part of nerddom that is completely foreign to me. So, but you had seen it in different you know, shops like, and things like that. You're yeah, you see like, it in shops. Like on the peripheral going, what are they doing? Village Gatehead, like mm-hmm. a whole thing. Paradise. Yeah. Even like in Barnes & Noble, there's a section to it. Right. And, and mm-hmm. All the bookstores are going to have yeah. it. And you go, hmm, I wonder what that's about. And then on TV shows you see, Big they, they always theory. have the nerd playing dra- yeah. Dungeons & Dragons. There was a, a cartoon way back when called Dungeons & Dragons. I remember it and I didn't watch it. The Dungeon Master no. with you and he. Now, did we get him a book yet? I we, I know we were talking know we were about. Talking I bought about... one for Dan because Dan hasn't had one in a right. while. So I bought I one no for Dan book. at Christmas time. What he? Because I think we were going to get him a fifth edition book. Yeah, we got. We're, I got Dan a fifth. Yes. We'll get Billy one. Yes. All right. It, it's on on my radar. I've so that's some... so that's what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about tabletop gaming and we're going to start teaching Billy. How to play Dungeons and Dragons? Now, Billy found um, a list, and there's a lot of different systems that are out there, all of, that have evolved over the off. past forty years. You know, Traveler and Shadowrun and GURPS and, that and Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu, <laughs> right? That he was like, "What is that?" Yeah, based on Lovecraftian uh, horror. There, and there's even like DC <clears throat> heroes mm-hmm. games and Marvel oh, yeah. right. hero I mean, games. Marvel you, superheroes. I mean, if you wanted to play Star the Trek. superhero, you yeah. could you could jump into the superhero mm-hmm. world. I've played a Jedi in Star Wars. Uh, we've played Star Trek. Well, I don't know if we, we've played at your table, but I've played I've in the past. Played, played Star, Star Trek. Trek. And there was this one that I was talking about underground, which is like a post apocalyptic nightmare kind of a thing. It's very funny. We were trying to uh, very, save Walt Disney World. Yeah, we were trying to save Walt Disney World because we had resurrected Walt Disney and created him as uh, he was the actual PC, my friend Justin's character, or Josh, Joshua. Excuse me, Justin was playing the. Um, I'm, no, I can't even describe that on the air. Uh, but it, it's 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 strange, and sometimes in these games, strength. Swing carry. No, it's not a carry. It's not a Katy Perry X Wing thing. Um, so yeah, that, that, there's lots of different types out there. But what we're going to do is we're going to teach Billy a little bit about D and D. And and if you have friends out there, you know this is the kind of thing you can kind of go along with us on this one, and and maybe pick up a little bit. And then at the convention at FC three, feel free to track us down. And hey, we'll be happy to talk about gaming because frankly, I love doing it. It's like one of my favorite things frankly. to do. Is ah. I know, yeah, it's play on my last name, I suppose. Um, so what we're gonna do is is hearken your your. I missed my. I missed my. Uh, <laughs> you missed your drum, You missed the rim shot over there. Yeah. Um, He's too busy trying to figure out how to learn about gaming. And I'm like actually that. He, Googling. and He can't like multitask over there. Uh, if, if I was a DC character, would it take one less piece of responsibility from me? I wouldn't have some decisions to make because uh, Superman already has these powers and that's what he does. And I, You know what? Um, my last uh, 
exposure to to superhero gaming. I <laughs> I game mastered uh, Marvel superheroes game, and and I created everybody because but my the whole the whole premise me as when you're the game master, the dungeon master, you're the guy in the middle. He was mean. Yeah, you oh. you basically you're the referee. You present the situation. So in this particular situation, we're sitting here in, in the studio teaching Billy. I am effectively the dungeon master. So I'm going to be. My job is to give you. Uh, situations to work with, and then your character gets involved, and you're like, okay, you well, make I, decisions, and, and you make decisions. I want to do this thing. I want to try this thing. I want to see if I can do this thing, and then the dice come into play to see success or failure. Now, in this superhero game, in this Marvel game that I was referring to, which we didn't know it was Marvel. Yeah, hmm. I I knew I was taking over the, the the dungeon master seat because our was that Evan had been Rune Quest. Yes, or we were Renoids? we were doing something in in We played this long campaign for like two and a half years. Just to transition to let um to let Doug give get Doug chance get yeah. started. So I knew one DM was ready to finish up a long campaign and another DM was getting ready to start another one. So I popped in and I figured I'll do this over a couple of sessions, it'll be fun. You're the transitional guy? I was the transitional guy. I was the I was the rebound guy. Um and so what I did is I crafted everything. For the players. I did not even tell them what game system they were going to be in. And and then I presented it as, the, on the very first session, I said, okay, everybody wakes up with a splitting headache and no memory of who you are or what you are or where you are or why you got where you are. In so, a cave-type cell. Yeah, you're in a cave, like an underground cell. And, and so they all had to figure out not only how to get out of their respective cells, but who they were and how how where they got there and how to fix the situation, how to beat the bad guys. So I'm letting them kind of piece things together little by little. They're asking me questions. They're like, well, can I do this? What do I look like? You know, what does this person look like? And I had crafted everything ahead of time. So I had just handed out, as people were figuring things out, I started handing out character sheets. And that's when they started piecing together, like, oh, my God, this this is where we are. This is so cool. Because, like, there's no mirrors or anything around, uh-huh. or no pools of water. So I don't know what I look like, but... If you were another player character, I could see what you look like. So, oh. therefore, Chris would hand me the sheet that describes you. And I say, well, in front of me, I see you're six foot tall. Oh. You've got whatever. And then he mm-hmm. would hand you the sheet that describes what I look like. So, then we could start piecing things together. and. Oh. It was Things it was like a that. lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch them, you know, try to piece together and solve the puzzles and, and move their way through the the situation. It was a lot of fun for me to set it up and just kind of throw it at them and say, "Here's the situation. Here's where you are. Enjoy." Now, I won't do that to you right now, uh, Billy, because you know yeah. you don't you don't scare away beginning players that way. But what, like yeah, I did, like I said, we were veterans. Yeah, we were veterans at that point, so definitely able to kind of roll with it a little bit better. But think think of. Like the movies like Excalibur and Lord of the Rings and Princess Bride and Crawl and all those fantasy movies that kind of just they paint the landscape of how you're going to look at the world. And and as I was saying, you know, there's we'll, we'll start. There's lots of different types of races that you could play. You could play lots of different types of creatures and whatnot. And there's even rules for you to pick a monster that you could play as your character. We're going to keep it simple for you. And it's, there's there's a couple of different types. And there was there's human and there's elf and there's dwarf and there's half elf. And they all have their different, you know, strengths and weaknesses and whatnot. And you had said, what again? I, no, I picked dwarf. Uh-huh. And should I rethink that? Is it's, dwarf it's, a bad thing? No. It's your, it's okay. your choice. I'll be a dwarf. Okay. I've, I've played just about every race there is in D&D at I one point or another. I've dwarf. And, and dwarves are a lot of fun. They're, they're great. They're, they have bonuses to mm-hmm. certain things. They have, you know, penalties to uh, certain other things. They, you know, they're short in stature, but they're sturdy little buggers. And, uh, they and got great constitutions. They have great constitutions. They're, that's their health points there. And, uh, and they, there's a lot of rich history to the dwarven land. So think about like all the Hobbit movies and, and the dwarves and the way they interacted with everybody. Uh, so you picked a dwarf. And then, like I was saying, again, there's, there's really, in essence, four types of character and then there's lots of different character classes that kind of flush that out you have your fighter and i decided i'm not a fighter right and then You're you have lover. then you have your wizards <laughs> ask susan right <laughs> and then you have your priests you have your and fight- i'm even less a priest yeah and then you have your rogue rather fight then you have your rogue types all right so you okay. have your fighter types you have your wizard types you have your um priest types mm-hmm. and then you have your your roguish you know the background types, and, and he said he I, wanted I want to be, be the the guy that hangs in the back making sarcastic comments. That was right. the exact that quote. That was the mm-hmm. thing, and I said, "Bard is the class for you." And it, it, seriously, and it works really well for Billy. As I was saying, it works great for Billy because bards are they're gatherers of information. They love 
trivia, they love stories, and they love music. They love making music. They love listening to music. They love being a part of that and figuring, you know, what Billy does best is is his radio show and just the, all he brings I will, all these pl- I will tell the stories while playing my lute. There, there you go. go. And Are you so, looking at something? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No? No, just so Facebook, <laughs> Katy Perry, oh, next wings. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, it's Facebook. Ah, uh, so so Billy is going to craft a dwarven bard, and that's cool. That's cool. That's that's okay. going to be a lot of fun. That, that is like an unusual concept. A dwarven bard. Dwarven bard. I've seen I, it. It happens. I know. It's just somebody's it, got to sing. It it's just rare. It is. It's true. I played an elven bard on a couple of occasions. Billy's rare. <laughs> Billy yeah. is. I have now, a human God. bard on Tuesdays. Billy, um, now. We have to craft who you are more than just a dwarven bard. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get my dice roller up here on my phone. I'm I wearing a it. wacky t-shirt. Good. <laughs> that can happen. He he changes it with the different bands yeah. for whatever yeah. day he's... Um, could be that he's been landed in like the 21st century, but he was a bard from like fantasy times. and. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any ideas on where I'm going to put him just yet, but I'm working on it. Um <laughs> And that's the great thing as a DM is, is, is you know, you kind of craft it as you go. Uh, now, there are six different statistics. There is strength. There is dexterity. There is constitution. Those are your physical stats. How strong you are, how agile are, how much of a hit you can take, how healthy you are. Those three. And then there's the, the mental stats. There's intelligence. There's wisdom. And then there's charisma. As a bard, you want your biggest score to be charisma because you're, you're going to use that personality. That's going to be your, your, your big thing for getting your, your point force. across. For you know, when you tell the jokes and you throw hurl the insults and you perform your your music and whatnot, it's all going to be driven by your charisma. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my little dice rolling program here on my phone, and we're going to come up with six numbers, and then you get to prioritize where those numbers fall. And those numbers are going to range anywhere from three to eighteen. Okay. All right. Three being the lowest, being oh wow, okay, that poor guy, and to eighteen <laughs> being oh that's magnificent. Ten, you know, ten eleven is an average human being. You know, what we're used to in, in modern society. I'm kind of tens and elevens across the board. As am I. Seriously. I, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, Chris, 20. you have an 18 charisma. No, I don't, because I can't convince anybody to do anything half the time. <laughs> so I really can't. I would say 15. I'd say 15 for me on that. All right. We'll have that debate another day. So wisdom, I am. However. I'm, <laughs> wisdom, five. <laughs> That's me. I was going to go with three. Hey, right. hey, hey, hey. Nice. All right, play nice. Oh, I am being nice right now. Oh, stop. Getting your digs in, I see. Yep. Okay. So his first his first score is a 15. Ooh. His next one is an 11. Average. There's another 15. Wow. Uh, let's see. That's 13. Still above average. How are we doing? Is that four? Four. Four of them. That one's a 14. Still above average. I'm telling you, I like this dice roll. I want to create characters with this sucker. And then there's a 10. So do you need any more? Yeah. Any others? So okay. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 78 points. 78 points to That's- play with. It's lower than what we usually have. Well, you see, we get eighty six points. And we just, play some. yeah, we just issue eighty six and say put them where you want. This is this is actually dice rolling for a oh. change of base. This is actually like the 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 original. This is the real way to do it in the book. <laughs> it's, I'm just saying. Since when do we follow rules? Yeah, well, you know, veterans. You get three for rule following. All right, okay. so where are we going to put these? Um, like what did, does he have one that's like, does he have anything higher than a 15? No. Okay. So put a 15 in charisma. Okay. And you could probably put another one of the big ones in intelligence. So he has the skill points to play with. Well, actually, no, there's no skill points in fifth edition. Is there? No. No. It all kind of goes off of proficiency and whatnot. I'm so used to third and pathfinder. No, no. Oh, <coughs> oh no. I wanted to make sure. What that... are you downloading over there? Holy. Nothing. Oh, pictures. No, I was looking at Dwarven Bard or whatever. Oh, I see. Did some, you somehow it cr- clicked over to uh, images? Fantasy armor on women. There's a, there's a whole podcast right there. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You know it's true. Some of the pictures you've come up with lately, I'm going to say thank you. Look, Weez agrees with me. <laughs> 
Nodding yes on the bobble. Oh, head. she is going to kill me. It's going to be great. Um, so now what do we have left? Um, well, I was putting a 15 in intelligence, but it's not necessarily skills points. It has to do with um, what the proficiencies are for that particular class. Right. And then Everybody think, starts a plus two at first level. Else. So... Billy, do you want them like big and sturdy and strong or quick and agile? I like quick and agile. Quick and agile, right? So we can definitely inflate uh, dexterity so over I can strength. Run on my little dwarven legs. There you go. Dwarves are, are natural sprinters. We're very dangerous over short distances. Okay, so that's goes the other 15. It's okay. Going into dex. So what do we got left? Um, We have 14, 13, 11, and a 10. Okay. So put the 14 in dex. I put the 15. Oh, never mind then. Carry on. You know what you're doing. You're better at this than I am anyway. Well, I was looking to our uh, PDF of the handbook. If I had brought my chip, I would have... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I was completely unprepared for this today. But that's okay. Bard. It's a good DM. Let's see. Proficiencies. Uh... Ducks and Charisma are the saving throws. So okay. that that's good that we put the 15s in there. Yep. Um, now, when we say saving throws, Billy, mm-hmm. what's going to happen is there's certain special attacks that will come your way every so often. Traps, uh, a dragon breath, uh, explosions, spells, things like that. The saving throw is your dice roll against that. So if you if you save against it, then you take less damage or no damage at all. So it's it's your opportunity to go. Oh no, dodge! Oh, you know, it's, um, it's my Captain America shield. Well, mm-hmm. that's actually armor class. Because yeah. what's going to happen as you gather equipment up, and as you're like when you're wearing particular armor, or if you have particular magic items or whatnot, that will all contribute into your armor class, and that's going to determine how hard you are to actually hit, hard enough to hurt. Uh, like uh, like the big time fighters who wear the big armor and have the shields and everything, their armor classes could be like 19, 20, 21, 22, somewhere in that area. So what that number represents is if I'm going to roll an attack, I'm rolling that D20, that big one, mm-hmm. and I'm going to roll. And if my number, after all of my bonuses and everything, matches your AC or higher, I've hit you. Okay. Then I get to roll the damage dice and see how much I've actually hurt you for. All right, so you you protect yourself by... Either A, positioning yourself in the fight so that you're nowhere near the, pr- the actual battle, which I'm very good at sometimes, not often. And then there are, t- you know, or you are doing so well at encasing yourself with, with magic items and armor and things like that that you can go wading right into the middle and things just can't hurt you. Tis but a flesh wound. Tis but a flesh wound. So looking, I've pulled up a um, character sheet, so I have a PDF of that in front of me. So it mm-hmm. said um, for bard skills, any three, and that will help me figure out where the numbers go for um, your ability stats. So I'm definitely thinking performance and persuasion would be two of the character skills that you would have being a bard. Because mm-hmm. you need okay. to perform and you definitely want to persuade people to mm-hmm. your way of thinking. Look over there! Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's it, exactly. So the other thing is um, <coughs> being someone that is a gatherer of knowledge. It could be history or it could be investigation um, would be to, or even deception, because you probably want to bluff your way out of a sticky situation. Okay. So one of those things, because you can choose from acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics, deception, history, insight, intimidation, and investigation. The, and there's not a lot of cryptic definitions to these words. They, they pretty much are what they sound like. Okay. Uh, medicine, so. nature, perception, religion, sleight of hand, stealth, and survival. So... I've already taken... Survival is camping skills. No. I, I don't, that's yeah. not me either. No. <laughs> so I definitely definitely took persuasion and performance as, as two okay. of those three skills because being a bard, yes, you're going to want to perform. Yes. Yes. Even if it is in the back of the party mm-hmm. throwing insults at the other mm-hmm. group, uh, at the monsters, mm-hmm. that, that um, they're, they're silly English knigets or whatever and their mother smelled of elderberry or yeah. something like that. Your father was a hamster and your mother smells of elderberries. So, where would you like to put your other one? Deception, investigation. 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 Sounds good. Okay. That's your ability to kind of like just kind of look through a room and find things that you might need or find useful. Persuasion. I, I'll tell you, I played a bard a long, long, long time ago, and I haven't played a straight one up in, in ages. But um, 
I went through half of a dungeon without ever rolling an attack. I would never drew my sword through, like, the first half of the dungeon. I was able to do just about everything I needed with my persuasion check. Nice. <laughs> I talked my way out of just about every fight. <laughs> And no. then we have Don on Tuesdays that yeah. thinks he's the king of bards, and right. he can't talk his way out of half of the stuff. Of anything. Now, do you actually talk and mm-hmm. persuade, or do we you try. just like roll well, dice we, and we say, w- say we, I win? Th- we say, this is what we want to do, blah, 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 mm-hmm. this is what we say, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are really two schools of thought. Okay. Oh, well, three. Uh, there's, there's, there's one where there are games, there have been tables where I've been at where you have to, you don't, you don't get to say, well, I want to do this. You actually you, have to do it. You look at the, the DM and you you look at him like, I am addre- I address this character. And then you start speaking as if you were that character. So you start playing yourself, you know, at that point. Cool. And and there are, there are tables where if you're playing a bard and you're like, okay, I start singing an Elven War song. Okay, s- start. Mm-hmm. And I have actually had to go through and I like I learned, you know, the Scotsman. Anybody oh, ever heard yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, Scotsman clad and kill yeah. left. I started doing that off Brian the top of my head. Bowers, I believe. Yep. His name was. Uh, and then and there is, is why Billy's going to play a bard. There you go. And then there's another end of the table, which is what we usually do. Is it's like okay. A combination of my, both. It's a little bit of a combination of both. My, I I will say, okay, my character is going to do this thing. I will I will walk up to him and I will say something along the lines of this, or I'm going to ask him for this particular information. So you're you're kind of narrating what is actually happening rather than okay. playing out what's going to. And then there's in the middle where mm-hmm. you can do a little bit of both, which is what kind of what we do. There are times where we perform as the character. Then there are times we just say, okay, this is what we're doing. So there's that. It depends on if it's a true role playing night or mm-hmm. where everyone's into the role playing or half of the groups into the role playing and the other half that wants to go to get to the dungeon. And, and so they, the tactical. They, they split the party, and then Chris has to figure out how to get the rest oh, of the party. Oh, splitting the party is like the bane of the of of the DM's existence. And our group has a tendency to split in like three different directions. Oh god, yeah. Four. So now you have to. It's 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 easy for a DM to keep track of like four or five players mm-hmm. all in the same spot doing basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but when one of them decides to wander off and do something on their own, Hunter, Wexler, Evan, Wexler, Evan Wexler. <laughs> It's a father daughter combination, and, and and so the Star Trek landing party splits off and yes. finds right. different characters. Well, exactly. Think of like Scooby Doo, mm-hmm. the the TV show Scooby Doo, yeah. when they're oh, all okay in the where Scooby like, and Shaggy go off yeah. looking for the Fre- kitchen, and Fred and, and Daphne, Daphne go do this, off, and Velma and is she loses her glasses and yes. just running around. So in circles. yes, so right, and that happens. It, it, truly, it it happens, mm-hmm. and and usually if we do split up the party, sometimes we do it. Um, strategically, mm-hmm. so that there's a fighter and a healer and a caster all in each section. When we're, I want to stress the fact going, sometimes, sometimes that happens okay. more but often than not. The however, two Wexlers that have a tendency to just go off, and we love both of the Wexlers. We love them definitely whatsoever. But speak for yourself. <laughs> Hunter is the bane of your existence. Yes, she can, but she does it so well. <laughs> yes, that started back in Star Wars. Oh God, yeah, she just would wander off. That's it. I'm, I'm, we're trying to get to the goal, and she's like, "No, I'm going to go over here." Yeah, because she wants like some type of huge gem or jewel mm. or, yes. or whatever. She's she plays that rogue type thing, and and that's what makes the group the group that it is mm-hmm. type thing is. And everyone brings their little nuances yep. in and and things like that. So. There are times you get to play the hero, and then there are times you get to play the uh, the target dummy, uh, <laughs> and then there are the times where you drive the DM insane. Uh, but it's interesting because you can actually create plot. With those those off those offshoots, like, everybody has their own tendencies. Their own tendencies, and then there's stories that to be had, you know, wandering around. What I've what I've done uh, currently as a dungeon master is I have spent the past twenty plus years working on this one game world that I started creating for myself a long, long time ago for an older game, and and so when I started DMing the table that's been running right now, uh, my my job was to basically create a canvas. So I created a small city. And I created the wilderness around it, and, and I created, and, and then I started throwing dungeons into it at random. So, and instead of telling the the, the party, okay, you're going to go here and you're going to go do this thing, or here's here's your story, I'm going to now tell you the story and you're going par- to partake of it. I created what what's called a sandbox game. All right. So, in essence, I created the whole scene, the whole city, everything around it, and then litter it with rumors and hints and and little basically maps and things that and they had to find it 
So now it's up to the party to go. They're they're kind of guiding their own story at this point. They're like, okay, we're going to go. We want to look for this type of thing. Okay, well, you know, go look there for you it. Go. And right. and now and then they're like, okay, we're going to walk out the door and turn left. Okay, well, this is what you find. Mm-hmm. All right, well, we're going to go out the city and we're going to go up north on this road. Okay, well, this is what you mm-hmm. find. You know, so that's the kind of thing is you can be, you can tell a story or you can give them this big sandbox to play in. And, uh, and let them just explore and, and see what's going on. Go out the door and turn left and see what happens. Cool. Yeah. You pick your own adventure. Pick and, your own adventures. And, and truly, that's what nose. it is. And then we happen to have, like, Evan's character will find some type of rumor of something. And then mm. my character has found some type of rumor of something. And <laughs> yeah, the, you found a cheesy one. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> mm, You're geez. an ass. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> Billy's like, mm, cheese. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, like four or five <laughs> People have gotten a different rumor, and some of them might be intertwined. Some of them may not be, and it's a matter of deciphering what it potentially is and seeing which one are you going to take because they're not all necessarily going to stay around. If you go to do one of them, this other one that you didn't do, you're not going to say, oh, it's not like a um, video game where you can go do that si- that, okay. that other thing way back when. Because we're not the only adventuring group in the world. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's Someone the else. thing. Okay. So so just because it's our table, it's not necessarily that Chris doesn't have all these NPCs that are like, well, they didn't pick this one, so therefore in a month this is what happens because they didn't choose mm-hmm. to go do this. Which is already thing. happening in that game that they don't know about. Right, There's because- something they chose to ignore. Well, I now know contingency. I have other people behind the scenes doing that thing that. really so, so if they, they turn around the and s- yeah so and if they turn around and say okay now we're going to go do this thing uh, like, all right well you get there so and you have multiple games with i've done that the same world i i have done that on i've i've played i think i have dungeon mastered something like 15 or 16 different campaigns over 25 years in this game world that i've created you know, and they're all in different places, and they do different things. And sometimes the parties are on the same world at the same time, in the same country, working towards the same goal. And that was kind but of interesting. Even though the two games aren't the same game, mm-hmm. right, they affect each other. Exactly, exactly. And and I actually at one point when when we were transitioning because Dungeons and Dragons now is in fifth edition. Mm-hmm. When it was transitioning between second and third, I had one group that was playing third edition and one group that was playing second edition, but they were playing at the same time. So I pitted them against each other using slightly different rules, but they never really interacted with each other because one was at school and the other one was basically home group. So, but what things, some things that these guys did would affect stuff that would happen over with the other guys. So I changed the story, but I didn't have to worry about the game mechanics so much. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and like right now, they their party decided to go check something mm-hmm. in particular out, which I can't remember because it's been. You're as- looking for the meteorite. Oh yeah, that's right. And the, and it's now and the, <laughs> because and, it's been almost a month. And the and the what's the, I'm I have the I'm a guilty of of creating epic storylines. Yeah, and he inadvertently said he said he did not want to I create did not, an epic storyline. I did not intend to, and you just did, and I did. Um, yeah, didn't you say that to Scott? Or I something did. Going, I said it's, I, yeah, I was telling Scott, Scott I'm like goes, I didn't I mean it. to. He goes, yeah, I knew it. Uh, or I created basically I created this um, part of the mythology of the world is that dragons have cycles where they're hibernating or they're hunting. Or they're mating. That's right. And weren't they hunting? They're all coming out of hibernation at roughly the same time, and it's becoming hunting season. So the base, the, what's going to happen early? is, huh? It, they're coming out of the, uh, hunt, they're coming out of hibernation early, and it's hunting yeah. season early. That, so what hap- What's going to happen dead, is dead. dragons are going to start popping up across the the, the entire planet. And, wow! And so now the, the Dragonado. Yeah, Dragon. It's Dragonado. <laughs> if he pulls this out next Sunday, <laughs> this is Dragonado. Dragonado. I'm blaming you. You got to write it down for me. You no, because I don't have any paper. I'm not going to remember that. Dragonado. That isn't that what the note feature on your phone's for? Nah, pff, technology. <laughs> so right now they so, don't have phones in the world of Dungeons and that's Dragons. That's it. They do not. It happens to be not true. So now we have a dwarven bard. Who's slowly but surely becoming to, uh, you know, as he's coming to grips with the fact that he, you know, Billy's like, I don't know what I just got myself into. <laughs> Him and his yellow, uh, yellow licorice over there, yellow Twizzlers. How's the yellow one? Good lemon. Is it, is lemon. It, is it lemon? Want to try? No. <laughs> that was just, no. What do you got against lemon? 
I cast thee with the with the yellow <laughs> twizzler. I'm pretty sure I can make a magic item out of a bag of twizzlers. I'm pretty you sure. You probably could. I did. No, it's like lem- I like lemonade, uh-huh. like lemon skittles or the lemon starburst or mm-hmm. whatever. I always ha- hand off to Sean because okay. I don't like the flavor. And I don't like the green apple skittles mm. anymore either because they changed the. I lime will tell to- you with the lemon candy. <laughs> I Eleven think- heads against Tanya. I throw oh. you. I think we can do that. I think I, I work on that. <laughs> I, th- I throw Twizzlers a handful of lemon can ha- heads can against, against Tanya. <laughs> that could definitely happen. I can work on that. Roll to hit. It'll be good. All right. So we have a dwarven bard. Yes, we have the the beginning. The beginning mechanics. of a dwarven bard, and uh, we have we have some scores. I do have some scores, and well, I'm let's hear to... what we got so far. Um, we have an eleven strength because strength's not the character's forte. He's not necessarily going to get in and mix it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is pretty agile for a dwarf, um, with having a fifteen. Um, we had a thirteen con and fourteen intelligence because he needed at least some of the. I think investigation was right. Investigations, intelligence related. I believe so. I think that's what made me do that. Ooh. And then, of course, he's not necessarily the wisest uh, dwarf around. Tell me which ones are. Yeah, well, Gimli? I don't know. <laughs> because he's got a 10, but yet yeah, he's back to a 15 in charisma. Okay. Which are pretty decent scores. Uh, bo- uh, does he get bonuses or penalties because he's a dwarf? I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh-oh. we got to work on that. Am I sleepy, grumpy, or dopey? <laughs> I personally like dopey. <laughs> He's my favorite dwarf of the seven dwarves. Uh, I can love you him. name all seven dwarves? I can. Sleazy, lazy, <laughs> slutty, <laughs> um, gimpy. And then the one that doesn't end in the Y. Doc. So, ouch. Yeah, ouch. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. No, I Oof. actually can name all seven dwarves. I don't think I can do it right off the top of my head right now because I'm doing other stuff. She's doing other stuff? Yeah. You're supposed to be podcasting. I am. Well, <laughs> really? She's going to start Listen, throwing things ass. at me again. Hey, be oh. nice. That's Dungeon Master ass to you. 32 minutes in and we've decided I'm a barf, bard barf. dwarf. <laughs> yeah, that's my name. Barf the, the bard dwarf. Barf the dwarf. Um, let's see. Um, his con score increases by two. So okay. that goes to a 15. Oh boy. Um... It says, most dwarves are lawful, believing in the firm, firmly in the benefits of a well-ordered society. That's me. Yay. They tend toward good as well as a strong sense of fair play and belief that everyone deserves a share and of the benefits of a just order. That's me, too. Okay, a lawful, good, dwarven bard. I really don't stick people. See, <laughs> there, there are dungeon masters out there who like adhere that. to al- alignment. Alignment basically gives you your, your outlook on life. And and the society, there are nine different alignments. They are some. There's there's the, there's two words to it. There's either lawful, neutral, or chaotic, and then good, neutral, and evil. And then you mix and match those two words. So you have lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, um, straight up neutral, neutral good, neutral evil, and then chaotic good, chaotic neutral, and chaotic evil. So all these different types of things are basically how your character looks at the world. A lot of DMs will actually stick you to it and say, you have to play this character. So if your character is chaotic evil, then you're just looking to destroy whatever you see and and make people miserable and have fun doing it. Um, I'm the kind of DM at this point, I'm like, use it as a guide. You know, you know, put a little note in the corner saying, yeah, I'd like to push this. But, you know, there are going to be times where you're going to be in a situation. You're going to be like, I want to do this thing. Well, that isn't necessarily awful good. I you know, But I'm thinking the way the character would look at it, and he's probably mm-hmm. going to do this thing. So don't. Don't worry about alignment as a restriction. Think I of it as just it kind funny. of a it's a it's a nice note, it's a guideline. You're gonna find that most of the people that Tyne and I game with love chaotic neutral because it's the free spirit. It's like anything goes, anything is possible. They can be lawful at times, they can be chaotic at times. They can they be can... nice, they can be not nice. You know, and it's it chaotic neutral for me has always been the cop out alignment. It get, it lets you do whatever the hell you want to do and it doesn't give you really any good focus. I I stick to neutral good mm-hmm. personally. Um, because it's like, yes, society is is good, and you want to do right by people. Sometimes but you have you to bend, bend the rules, rules a little bit to to get things done the right way. Chaotic good is like Robin Hood, the guy who's going to break the law to do nice things for people. Um, I primarily play chaotic good. The, the 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 if if you ever see like a monster with neutral evil, those are the ones. Those are the screwballs you really have to worry about because chaotic Joker? evil are pretty straightforward. Lawful evil are those. 
like they're diabolic supervillains. But they have. They're like you know, they Lex, have a reason. Lex Luthor is lawful evil. Okay. All right, because he believes in rules, mm -hmm. regulations, and loopholes, and he has a plan at all times, and he knows exactly how to make how to you know hit the right note and pre make the mm -hmm. right pressure point. Neutral evil is is basically just you don't know what you're going to get. And that I would say Joker. That, no, or is he chaotic evil? J Joker Joker's would definitely be chaotic evil because he just doesn't care. He's he's sociopath about it. You know, where neutral evil is, is it like Doctor Octopus. Yeah, Doctor Octopus. Well, Doctor Octopus even would be lawful evil, I think, yeah. because he believes he's science. He believes in order oh, okay. and creation and, and certain things, but he believes in twisting it for his own uses. Neutral evil, Juggernaut. Okay. You know, saber tooth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. You know? Okay. Um, so far, I'm, I'm the best dwarf ever. I'm excellent. Yes, yes you are. Very nice guy. Mm -hmm. Very definitely. He's very definitely. Um, yeah, so he's got dwarven resilience, so that gives him some bonuses against poison. Mm-hmm. Um, advantage on um, saving throws versus poison, and he's got a resistance against poison damage, so it means that you can, I think, take five off. I think, yeah, for the, something like that. Um. Uh, You're a sturdy little bugger. Yeah. Okay. You still have combat training, um, so you have the ability to use a battle axe, a hand axe, a light hammer, and a war hammer. So those are the um, okay. weapons that you... You can get the point across when you need to. Yes. Okay. If, you, if you truly need to do something, you can throw uh, an axe or a war hammer into a... Or a yellow skittle. Or a yellow skittle. You can turn mm -hmm. the war hammer mm -hmm. into it. Um, then you would look at tool proficiency, um, an artisan's tools of your choice, smithing tools, brewer's supplies, or mason tools. And that's just for dwarven. I don't know if something with them being a bard that you could change out one of the tool kits mm -hmm. or the tool proficiencies to do some type of um, explorer's tools or I don't know. Because I know like... Um, My wizard in that campaign, because I'm an elf, so I had mm -hmm. like gaming tools, yeah, type thing. So for gambling, like card playing and things like that, and things like that. <coughs> so there's that, Excuse and then okay. um, because you are a dwarf, you um have some stone cunning, so that means you know if there's like possibly shifting and sliding walls and stuff in oh, cool. in cav caverns and caves because mm -hmm. dwarves live in in the. You're a natural born miner. Yes. Oh yeah, just like the seven dwarves. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that, yeah. That, that's that's the plan. That's where is that really where the seven dwarves being miners came from? Is like from them dwarves from having, fantasy. Yeah. From fantasy. Yeah. 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 Okay, I thought that was just like a convenient yeah. tool of Walt Disney. No. No, a lot of that goes based on the fairy tales and mm -hmm. everything and mm -hmm. stuff that was written. Even and, Tolkien drew a lot from like fables and fairy tales of the 1800s when he started crafting Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth. And most of that stuff was being crafted in the 20s and 30s. And when was Snow White put down? It was it was in the 30s? 30s. 1939, I believe. So it was all coming out at about the same time. Cool. Yeah. See what you're learning already? Yes. How are we doing so far? Uh, we're at 38 minutes. So all right. I, I don't know. Hmm. So we have a dwarven bard who is slowly but surely coming together. Yes. He's going to be persuasive and performing and investigating. And he's uh, sturdier than the average little bugger. <laughs> he can speak, read, and write common in Dwarvish. Okay. Uh, so uh, he's going to have the tattoo like Hunter has. Of right. The Dwarven symbols and things like It's like, it seems to be like Norse um, script or something. Yeah, it, when, when Tolkien crafted languages for Lord of the Rings, he actually crafted alphabet for a couple of elven dialects for dwarves and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. and the Dwarven language... Is very much Viking runes. Is what it's it's the seem the similar feel to it. Okay. Yeah. It's really cool. It's kind of neat. Did you pick a name? I don't. I don't remember if I caught that or not. I I haven't picked a real one yet. I haven't I, picked a real it, one yet. It, it was. I think Barf was my my <laughs> joke name, but I, right. I, this is serious. I need a name. You that need a good name. Me. <laughs> Dan, Deanna wanted to know if we were still podcasting. I'm like, yeah, we're teaching Billy about gaming. She goes, LOL, can't wait to hear that one. So, <laughs> th so this is this is um, the surprise podcast this, yes. for everyone else. This will be fun. They don't, they're not here to. Yeah, they should have been here for that. I'm you not know? kidding. Um, dwarven names tend to 
have hard consonants and guttural sounds. Yep. Rah, yeah. No. <laughs> um, well, think of like I, actually. I, okay, from one of my favorite episodes of Mystery Science Theater okay. 2000, I am Ega. Ega. E e g a h. Okay. Ega. Ega. You know, it, it also sounds Does that work? Sure. It's, it it also works. Sounds okay. Klingonish. It, okay. It's like Ugh. it was either that or Mitchell. <laughs> Which one do you like Ega, better? Ega. Ega, okay. also known as Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> Ega. We call him Mitchell for short. Ega, your mucus. Oh, wait. <laughs> Two of my favorite episodes of MST3. That's yeah. awesome. All right, so we have Ega. Ega the dwarf. The scald. Very cool. And uh, and we can, we'll can we we'll start working on the adventures <laughs> of Ega the dwarf going forward. So we now have the basics. You've learned a little bit about it. You've you've seen it. We're going to get your uh, your very own copy of the fifth edition players handbook oh, for D anD D. So you thank can you. start reading it and look diving into it. And and, and as as a uh, well, we'll have Chris create the finish creating the character sheet because uh, he has these. So if cool we started programs. like a three person game of Dungeons and Dragons here, or do I jump in as Ega into an already existing world? You can do either. You can really can do either. And you know what? I can I'll, I can get something going. You don't have to podcast about awesome. it, but I can definitely get something going at home. Although someone will just turn around and go, who is this dwarf? Yep. That's happened. That's so, happened. Uh, so on Sundays, after uh, Billy's done with his show, uh-huh. you got to pick him up and bring him out to our house. But see, he goes to bed at like 7. Yeah. yeah so that, <laughs> So that's that's the We'll dilemma. come up with something special. It's a little more convenient to his oh, schedule. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a, he got a pain already. Oh, no. No, that's okay. He's no, going to be a welcome addition. Not the, not the pain. The, the player character is because he has to go to bed yeah. early because he and then over the course of And then <laughs> over the course of podcasts, we can talk. We can do little highlights of the adventures of Ega the dwarf. Yeah. Ega's a wuss. Well, right now, Ega is Ega probably... Ega needs sleep. <laughs> Ega is probably wandering out, uh, solo adventuring, just Most finding, likely. finding stuff. And yeah, or, or he's training. He's, he's back home in the, 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 the Misty the, Mountains, the, the, learning his trade. Ega's writing for his solo album. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There you go. He's, he's the, uh, the roadie for a band at the moment. Uh-huh. He goes on the road. So, you know, over the course of the podcast series, every so often you will hear a, we'll, we'll start like the first couple of minutes, we'll be like, here's the adventures of Ega the dwarf. You know what? That would be amazing. Ega the other day did this. <laughs> Single-handedly defeated an entire uh, slew of dragons. They were all little chocolate bars, but still. <laughs> Ega invaded the Twizzlers factory in eastern Pennsylvania. There it is. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, we'll do that, and, and that'll be fun. And so, you know, every, every so often we'll have that. That'll be fun. So welcome to the, you, you, as, a, as a former Jedi once said, you have taken your first step into a much larger world. I'm the only uh, dwarf with a secret identity, Ega, otherwise known as Mitchell. Yes. As Mitchell. And so that, my friends, <laughs> is where we are going to leave you today. And so thank you again for listening. And this has been... This is definitely Ega's music. This is Ega's music now. <laughs> this, is, this has been Monkey Business. Ega's theme. Ega's theme is going to play us out from here on in. A product of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, presenters and purveyors of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you May 20th and 21st of 2017. That may have actually already happened by the time you hear this. (laughs) Or it might be coming up. Or it might be coming up. We'll play it by ear. We've already been killed. Oh, twice over. (laughs) 